Ted Esther, uh, seated next to you. Um, today is the time and date set for an arraignment pre-trial, or an arraignment uh, in this matter. Uh, the defendant is charged with uh, count one, homicide, uh, second degree, uh, maximum penalty, life or any ten years. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 769.36. For each death that is like the operating a motor vehicle. Oh, I get your stuff. Okay, so. um, resulted from the operation of the vehicle, um, DNA upon arrest, count two, uh, homicide, second degree, uh, same maximum penalty, count three, operating while intoxicated, causing death. Uh, maximum penalty 15 years and or uh, $2,500 to $10,000 uh, monetary sanction. Uh, the defendant may be uh, convicted for each death arising out of the same transaction. The court may order consecutive sentencing under MCR, or MCR 269.36. For operating while intoxicated, causing death, same penalty as count three. Count five, operating while intoxicated, causing serious injury, maximum penalty up to five years and or $1,000 to $5,000 monetary sanction. How does uh, the defendant fit? I'll be saying mute, Your Honor. Uh, the case has been assigned to Judge Brown. Um, probable cause conference there April 30th at 9 a.m. Um, we assume with the exam date of May 6th at 1.30 that will be in person. And I'll hear Your Honor, the uh, people are requesting $1.5 million bond at this point, along with conditions. It is based, uh, at least in part, on the fact that the, as the court has already indicated the defendant is facing two life sentences um, that could run consecutive to uh, other offenses that are involved in this matter. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, we believe that the likelihood of conviction is extremely high here. She, uh, we have ample video evidence showing exactly what happened during this incident. And finally, Judge, uh, the defendant suffers from a very severe substance abuse issue uh, corroborated by friends and family members, uh, and she creates a very high risk to the public. For all those reasons, we believe that a $1.5 million bond is in order in this particular case. Um, Your Honor, again, Bill Colobus on behalf of uh, my client. Uh, Your Honor, I think the court and the court uh, has served in judiciary for, for many years uh, and understands and appreciates that at an arraignment the client has not been found guilty. Uh, we don't have prejudgment penalties. What we do have here is somebody, when looking at bond, any favorable and unfavorable facts. The favorable facts are my client is 66 years of age. My client has no record whatsoever. In fact, she has never even received a traffic ticket of the 50 years of driving. She's better than I am. In 60 years on this earth, she's never had any traffic involvement. She's never had any law enforcement involvement. I think that adds a little credibility to her side of the table. In addition, she's owned her residence, which is about 400 feet from where this took place, for 40 years. She's retired from a position uh, and was living a peaceful life with her husband in retirement. What the prosecutor fails to mention to the court is that she has a history, and even the neighbors in the news media has said that she drives like a little old lady when she drives. You gotta drive around her. That in addition, that my client has a history of having seizures. 
And this history has lasted since last November. It started of an epileptic type seizure in her legs. In fact, that's that day she was treated for it. It's not like her and to she drive. Was drinking. Yeah, exactly. Like she was if, drinking. If I may, if I may continue with all due respect from everyone, a search warrant was executed at the bar that was allegedly where she was at. The bar showed that she had one glass of wine four hours prior to 3 o'clock, between 11 and 12, and a bowl of chili. That was confirmed with a search warrant of what the receipt was. In addition, that no doctor told her not to drive. The doctor told her not to drive for a number of months, very few months, and then she could operate a vehicle. About a month prior to this accident, Your Honor, because I want the court, I'm not doing a trial today, but I want the court to know everything in setting the bond, that this is not a monster. It's horrible what happened. Absolutely horrible. I have two children. It's absolutely horrible. But some things we don't have control over. If I have a heart attack at my age, I don't have control over it if I'm operating a vehicle and hit somebody. So, Your Honor, the $1.5 million in the murder charge, I don't know where that's coming from, but they have to prove it. And respectfully, Your Honor, we would ask for a $100,000 cash or surety, 10%. She can have, uh, the court can order home confinement. Police have never been called to her home. She doesn't even have a speeding ticket if there's such a substance abuse at 66 years of age. So we're asking for home confinement along with 100,000 10% cash or surety. In addition, she can um, have an alcohol monitor. Any violation whatsoever, bond revolt. But she gets medical treatment, absolutely gets medical treatment. In fact, they have all the prescriptions she's on at the jail, which are numerous because of the paralysis she gets once in a while in her legs and it's all documented and I'll, I'll bring forward the medical records so we're burning somebody at the stake by just craziness just crazy words being that because there's been deaths which is horrible absolutely horrible but we have to go back and say how did it happen if me Bill Colovis has a heart attack on the freeway and I hit somebody changing a tire I can't be liable in today's society. Yeah, but your ass wasn't drunk. You didn't purposely run to the shit, so it's two different things. Again, let me repeat. They did a search warrant, and it showed one glass of wine four hours prior. Thank you, Judge. May I respond, Judge? Your Honor. How do you keep going? Not hitting no break or turn. Because sometimes you have a seizure and your legs freezes up. Your Honor, there is no indication whatsoever in any of the evidence that we have uncovered in this case that the defendant suffered from a seizure at the time of this incident. In fact, quite the opposite. A very long investigation has occurred. There was a preliminary breath test done which indicated that her blood alcohol level was significantly over the legal limit. Uh, what's more is, is based on, uh, she indicated herself that she had some seizure issues and she was on some medication and that she wasn't supposed to be drinking but admitted that she had been drinking that day. So she is a danger to this community and that is illustrated no clearer than the two dead children that she is directly responsible for. A $1.5 million bond in this case is a gift and that's what I'm asking for to consider. How do you save the community the, from the rumors are that she drinks in her car in parking lot? Excuse me, rumors. Hopefully they don't have rumors on any of the people here today. In the, in the state of Michigan, if you have a seizure, Your Honor, may I continue? Yes. Thank you. She took my two grandbabies. I'm going to start uh, removing people three from of mine the, on the same day. day. keep getting this interruption. I don't know if you can mute for right now. Your Honor, um, again, if it's the safety of the public, there's no history whatsoever. Number two is she can be put on an alcohol tether 
Number three is she can be put in her home. If she violates her home to go get her mail, she can be picked up and put in without bond. We'll stipulate to that. So, you know, the court seen many, many people, thousands of people before the court, and it's seen criminal history. We don't even have traffic ticket. It's absolutely horrible, but we're not punishing somebody before they're convicted. Thank you. Yes, she chose to drink, and those were my grandbabies. Thank you. She made that choice to put in that car, and she chose to drink and drive. And she took my grandbaby from us. Understood. Your name for the record, ma'am? My name is Chastity Phillips, and I'm the grandmother of the two babies that were killed. Thank you. Factors are considered in yeah. setting on. She has no uh, criminal history, identified criminal history, uh, no incidents of uh, non appearance. Um, Your Honor, one of the victims does want to speak to the rest of the court. She may. <coughs> My name is Raquel Smothers. I am Mariah's sister. What he had said about getting injections in her legs for something, knowing that with or without drinking, you're still putting people in harm's way because with muscles and everything, you can't control something. Why operate? A vehicle, knowing you're taking medicine, <laughs> that drinking will affect it. I was there. I seen more. <laughs> my daughter, my mom, my sister, my nephew from the opposite side of the family, my sister's three children. We were supposed to be planning a birthday party for Zane, not a funeral. <laughs> no, when you have medical conditions, you should never get behind a wheel whether you are drinking or not. Taking medications, they tell you not to drink, but she still chose to drink. She still chose to get into that vehicle. I will never look at the month of April the same ever again. My birthday was a few days prior. The babies were just at my house. My niece with her flawless curly hair loved to dance. My nephew, he always hated it. My truck was dirty. <laughs> I cleaned my truck out just for him. He loved kajitsus. He loved cracking jokes. Eminem was his idol. They walked into that birthday party having a fun time. They were sitting at that table, eating. And this woman crashed her car through this building, destroying all of our lives. Not just my family, everyone else that was in that building. My nephew and my sister are still fighting for their lives today. I had to be the one to tell my sister her babies were gone when they removed her ventilator yesterday. She said, how am I supposed to live without my babies?
<laughs> Nobody should ever have to go to a birthday party thinking that they're gonna die. Medical history or not, every medication tells you not to drink. She knew it. She shouldn't have done it. I had to see my deceased niece and nephew. I had to see their very last moment before their car was removed. I had seen it. And my sister can't decide what she wants. And then babies, I can tell you right now, cannot have an open casket. It's a horrible, dramatic thing. I cannot close my eyes at night without seeing the babies and what they look like. No, I'm done. <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> to her credit, she does have uh, ties to the community. Um, however, uh, I'm say something, Your Honor. I'm the brother of the father. Um, your name, please. Nicholas Phillips. All right. Go ahead. This woman. Deliberately, without even in the break, destroyed my brother's life. Those was his baby. His little girl used to go to his basketball games. And now that little girl is not being gonna be able to go see it. Their father, because a woman, claims to have high community ties to her community, wanna drive and hit the gas even further when she got to that parking lot and destroyed multiple lives. My brother is in the hospital right now. Praying that his little boy comes through and he still got to tell his son that he lost his sister and brother. How is that right or how is that even fair? How is it even justified because the woman saying that she got some type of medical issue. As my sister said, you take medicine for years. You're a adult. You can read the label. It says do not drink. And you can't sit here and tell me one drink that would do that. You can't. I'm a high educated man. You can't tell me that. And there's no justifying what she did to my family. There's none. This will never, ever be right. This not in this world that anybody can sit here and say, well, she could say it was an accident. That was not an accident. I know what accidents look like. That happened all the time on a freeway. If, if she was not drunk as people claim it, her house is three houses away from what she did. Why did she just go home? Why did she? It's right there. Three houses away from where she did that stuff that she did to my brother's family. Three houses. Why did she go home? So you as a defender, you should feel ashamed for you to try to stick up for only one drink. One drink don't do that, sir. And never will. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Can I say something? Your name, please. Girls are Go ahead. I drove there. My two children were there. And whether you're having a seizure or not, that was intentional. You couldn't drive the way that those roads bend and the way that, that you drive in there. There is no way that that woman was not conscious in turning that vehicle. She aimed it right there, right at the bar, where probably her husband
and should have been sitting. I don't know what her intentions were, but I can tell you it was in purpose and it was unintentional. You can tell. We all know it. Thank you. Nice speak, Your Honor. Your name, please. My name is Jock with the, um, so I'm a member of the Boat Club, and I've been a member for many years, and uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with Marcella, and during my 10 years of being a member of the Boat Club, and most of the time I see her, she's been highly intoxicated, and I've watched people w try to walk her out the door dozens and dozens of times, and, and uh, it, you know, one of the things that are brought up here is the fact that she hit a vehicle down the road and a tree down the road. And, and uh, I, I believe that, uh, that it wasn't intentional, but I do believe that it, it was a, a, a situation where she was trying to flee and run from what she had just done down the road because she shouldn't have been driving. And, and everybody knew that, right? Everybody, you're a member of the boat club, you know this lady shouldn't be driving. And, and I believe she was fleeing that scene, and there's a couple, there's a feed bump before you enter the parking lot to the boat club, as well as a, like a runoff ditch that you gotta pass over with your vehicle. We all drive 10 miles an hour through that area because of these, you know, and it's a narrow road. But I, I believe that she was fleeing from hitting the truck so that she wouldn't get caught drunk driving. And in and, and doing so, hit the uh, speed bump as well as the little ditch that's 30 feet past that and lost control of her vehicle. So I don't believe it's intentional, but I do believe that, and I know that that she she, she drinks a lot and and she, you know should never get behind the wheel. And and if you're under that much medicine as her attorney states, then even one glass of wine could potentially you know do you like this. And and not only that, it's a lot of medications. You know you're not supposed to drive on. Right, so you know whether it's the alcohol or the medication, or it's neither. This lady should never be behind the wheel. We've watched her, you know, take baby steps to get out of the place because she could barely walk. Right, let alone get behind the wheel, and, and you know, for such a frail lady to, to cause such devastation in her car, I think that I I I think that she shouldn't be free on bond because of this. You know, I, I believe it's decades of her drunk driving that just caught up to her, is what I believe. And, and, and decades of her driving under the influence of whether it be pills or, or alcohol. And uh, I, I, would, I would point towards alcohol in my experience of knowing Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor. All right. Um, I don't know some of the <coughs> issues that affect uh, my uh, decision in setting bond. Um, high on that list is the fact that she's facing two uh, life sentences, uh, two 15-year sentences, and four five-year sentences. Uh, therefore, I find uh, reason the bond to be 1.5 million with the following conditions. It will be reporting to pretrial services. The defendant is to appear for examination, arraignment, trial, sentence, and any time uh, directed by any court, by any judgment issued by any court. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. Do not commit any crime while out on bond. Immediately notify the court in writing with a change of address or telephone number. No use of alcohol or any illegal controlled substances. Submit to substance abuse testing and monitoring, including a scram tether and GPS tether. Do not purchase or possess a firearm or other dangerous weapon. Forfeit any passport and not operate a motor vehicle while on the line. Thank you, Judge. Um, the uh, 1.5 million, will they be cash, surety, or 10%? Cash or surety. 10% at all? Um, she has no history whatsoever, Your Honor? Between her and the surety. Uh, I believe the surety would typically give 10% of that uh, to post the, the guarantee. Okay. 
card. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Judge. All rise, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ferguson, three seconds.